I'm Rob Lacuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby here with Director Pablo Lorraine. Pablo, your new film, Spencer, opens with the words, a fable from a true tragedy. And, you know, for many of us, a fable means, you know, a short story with some kind of moral truth. What were you trying to achieve by setting the film up in this way? Well, what, what, there's so much to being said and written and filmed around, around Diana that, that there's always the risk that people would believe that we're actually saying something that entirely happened. Um, and, and, and that's something that we want to avoid and we want to invite the audience to understand where's our ground and our ground is, is fiction, it's a work of fiction. Um, but I understand a, a fable is usually like that, and and it's it, the origin fable uh, carries a, a, like a moral uh, idea, right? And a moral. Um, and I don't know what that is in our movie, um, but I do know that we're showing um, a woman that that went through a very difficult process, and. And eventually was able to to walk out of there because of her strength and and because of her her you know her power as a as a person as a woman and as a mother too and and that is what I think we're doing. Yeah, as soon as I saw that, it put me on notice that we're not just going to watch another biopic about the people's princess, right? And that's not something that I would expect from a Pablo Lorraine film from the films that I've seen that you've done so far. Um, it's something deeper. And it's also at a very transformative crossroads in, in her life, in her journey. Um, why was it chosen? Why was that particular point in her life that you were able to fictionalise? Why was that chosen? Well, we, we looked with uh, Steve Knight. We, we looked for a moment that could, you know, define her, um, a moment that maybe it's just, as you say, three days of her life that could help us understand maybe um, where, where where she and what happened to her. And because any of us, I think, any person, any human would be likely be more, not only more interesting, but more, more possible to understand and define <clears throat> when we are going through a crisis. Um, the good times are, uh, it, they don't really reveal a lot, I think. Um, it's, it's, it's when we are in trouble, when, when things come up. And what was that crisis? And, and I'm thinking that that could be the, the moment of, of her separation, when she decides to recover her identity, she decides to <clears throat> get her name back, and she decides to leave that family, you know, it's, it's a fairy tale that is broken um, by a woman that didn't want to be there anymore. And, and that decision point, it's, it's, it happens in, in, in when the movie is, takes place. So that's kind of our approach, I think. Yeah, speaking of fairy tales, um, I got a sense from the film that the royal family depicted in this film um, is quite different to what we would normally see in a film about them or featuring them. And, uh, you know, art is subjective, right? So when I view, view it through my personal lens, it confirmed my unease with the monarchy and the institution and complex oppressive machinery that surrounds them, right? And I was wondering if that was the outcome you were anticipating from audiences to, to look at them almost like mm -hmm. the villain of the piece. I, I understand what you're saying, but not, not really. I, I, the motivation is not to make a, a description of them as, uh, as evil or horrible people or whatever. I think what, what we try to do is to describe a very particular context where people that is born to that privilege and in that circumstance are also trapped in the wheels of history and tradition. So that would be, you know, uh, that's not so interesting, I think. What, what we try to do is to, is to see what they go through and the, the thing that they have to deal with. And, but in the movie, the, the family and the institution 
it's it's really you know a little bit back it's not in the in, in the foreground it's 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 more as a background as a context because who she really talks to is the people that works in the house in the service right that whether it's the dresser played by my uh, by uh, sally hawkins maggie or 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 darren is the cook played by, by sean harris that that's and the kids of course that's that's her world that that's where she inhabits with more freedom that's how you get to know her um and and yeah what what happens is that <clears throat> when you get to understand the rules and the protocols and the the things that they have to do in in the modern world some of them are really absurd you know and and, and when you put them on film it's not only absurd but you start thinking that they're they shouldn't exist maybe you know and why these people is just in that context, why? But it's not its not my problem. First of all, I'm not British, I'm from Chile. We don't have that, I live in a republic. Uh, but but it's its interesting material, I think. And and of course, a very English thing, but Diana, I think is very universal. And I think whatever happens to her is something that we can all relate to. That, and that is probably the, the angle of the movie. Yeah, it's the, that anti-establishment, uh, <clears throat> aspect is very universal as an Australian I don't live in a republic and so I completely keyed into that side of things because of my own personal viewpoint and I think a lot yeah, of, of audience members will feel that way but that's fantastic because yeah. because when 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 a movie has the, I mean the operation of a movie should never be completed by the filmmaker and when I see those movies I'm like why this person, this filmmaker, wants me to see this movie and is telling me what you think, what you feel. It's just, I'm told to, to everything. And I, I'm, I want to be challenged and I want to be exposed and I want my own biography and my own feelings to be part of the operation. And what you're saying is fantastic because then the movie would could feel different depending on who you are and where you are. And, and that is, is an interesting thing. And that, that friction in between the movie and, and the audience and, and, and it's different for each of us. If that's possible, then yeah. fantastic. Yeah, it's that subjectivity um, that gives you an, a, a deeper understanding perhaps of certain characters. The royal family, are, <clears throat> they are at a distance in the film. We, we don't really know much about them. We see them at a distance, almost blurry because the focus is on Diana and on the, on, on the stuff. The supporting cast in this movie are wonderful. Um, you know, Sally Hawkins and Sean Harris, Timothy Spall, but we really should probably talk about the lead um, of the film, Kristen Stewart. Um, maybe some people were surprised by that casting. Once you see the film, you understand that she's really perfect as Diana. What was the thought process in her getting into this character? What, what work did you do with Kristen to, to kind of crystallize her performance? Well, it was, it was, it, it was an interesting process. And I, the, 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 probably the hardest part is not what it's on the superficial, in the, you know, it's not the superficial ones. It's, 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 it's not, I mean, it's very relevant, of course, how she looks and, and we worked with an incredible team and, 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 it's incredible how you know how close it is, and 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 of course you know um, how the things that she were, and 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 for sure the accent that was you know also worked with uh, with William Conacher, who's our, our expert. Um, so it those things were very important because if 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 they're not made well, then you don't believe what you're seeing and then everything falls apart as a, you know, as, as a house of cards, it's just, it's a disaster. So, but once those things were on the works and, and, and Kristen got the accent and everything was settled, we had to face the most complicated part, which is the emotional transit and that she was going through. Um, and, and that it was, it was a, a beautiful, work and I think that that Kristen understood very early on that um, that Diana was a very mysterious person and 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 playing mystery is very hard because I don't think it's actually possible you have to carry that 
And I think she has that, you know, in, in camera for sure, at least. Um, yeah. So it's, it's what, what is not being told. And, and it's about how she can be so strong that can go through a thousand and two hundred years of traditions in that family of a very powerful structure on the things that you shouldn't do because they're not you're not supposed to do and being who she wanted to be and walk away from that house yeah you know i would i would think there'd be some kind of anxiety when playing someone like her because you have to walk that tightrope between authenticity and recognizability otherwise it's not her but also you don't want to parody her or mimic her. And, and so I, I wonder how, what are your thoughts on how difficult it was to get that balance just right, especially at the beginning when you were both getting used to working with each other? Well, it's, it's, um, it's very hard to uh, explain because it's, it's the result of a, of a, of a process that what, what we do is in film, you create an illusion, right? Um, which is why, you know, it's, it's what really motivates you to, to do something. It's, at least for me, it's just that, that idea of the illusion is so interesting, but, but you're right. I mean, there's, there's a limit in, in, in the imitation and in, the, in how you can mimic someone um, because it's not only unreal at some point then it can become funny and it can become you can feel you're actually mocking you know and so it is a balance and it is a balance on 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 what to do or not to do and my my personal way to do it is to have the audience inside of her perspective so the movie takes time in sort of landing the subjects and the characters and introducing the space and the story. But there's a point in the movie that we start to see the world from her perspective. And that's where the character is stronger than ever, right? That's the biggest moment. Yeah. Because you not, not only accept that she's Diana, you understand that, that you know, she's doing the role in a way that is accomplished but you are with her and and that's the that's the thing it's it's an emotional process once you accept that you are with her as an audience then you accept everything else but that's the first step if you look at it from afar um and it's just the cosmetic you know how she looks and how she talks and okay you can it's you need that but if you just over focus on that and it's all you care and it's your all the eyes are in that then at, at some point it creates a distance because we're not doing a photo shoot right and it's, yeah. it's and it's not a lookalike contest it's a it's a person that's going through a crisis and that is what's relevant yeah that's right i'm glad you mentioned that because the film does shift at a certain point which we won't give away but eventually it starts off a very austere dreamlike aesthetic which i personally believe is one of the hallmarks of the films that you've done recently naruda and jackie even no uh, has some of those elements um it's very contemplative and visceral and then it becomes something else towards the end um you know the scene on the beach the scene when she's dancing um and i just wonder why what is it about that style of filmmaking making something contemplative and visceral that attracts you what why why do you do films that way <laughs> it's a good question i don't know because it's i don't know how to do it differently I, I wouldn't know you know it's not it's not a choice necessarily uh, it's how it comes out um i thought i want to avoid the question but I, I don't know how to answer that it's just i work very hard to to create a a connection and, and i work really hard to to make something that has a tone and an atmosphere. I understand that we need, of course, a great structure. And if we don't have it, it it's a disaster. And, and we need characters and, 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 and dialogue and things that come from the natural process of cinema that is essential. 
but what I also care a lot that because I think that's what stayed with me in as a viewer seeing other movies, it's it's the tone and the atmosphere and those things that you can't describe and yeah, that's what I try to do. Uh, there's a scene in particular um, that I'd love to talk about because it's a really good example of how you bring in so many elements of the team that you worked with, um, the production designer and a guy, Hendrix Diaz, and the cinematographer, and um, the, especially the score. Um, it's the scene at the dining table. It's so suffocating and so claustrophobic and made me feel very, very uneasy. Um, as the as the score gets louder and louder as she's got these <laughs> pearls, right? Um, it was almost, to be honest, in a great way, like a horror film to me. Uh, what what was the what was the key for you in 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 putting that scene together? Because to me, it was probably the highlight scene of the whole, whole film. You mean the dinner, the dinner yeah. scene, the, the soup? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what? It's it, it's it's interesting because that scene and. Um, it's the first moment where the audience starts to see the world through her eyes. Once, once there's something that happens that is not real and we understand that it's only her that is looking at it, we are with her and we are part of her point of view and that it's quite relevant um, and very important. And if you think it's suffocating, and you think it's claustrophobic, I and mean, whatever the emotions that you're expressing, which I'm, 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 I'm very happy to hear them, by the way, I have to say that those come because it's what she is feeling. So you are joining her, you're being part of her process. And that's why we care about her. And it's not just like the type of horror or whatever narrative that stays away from her. We're inside of her, and and that is the process that I am interested on. And um, once you're inside of her perspective, there's no way back, you know. And and the movie yeah. never lets you go. Hopefully, up until the end. Yeah, that that's precisely what happens. That was the moment where I was finally in her shoes and feeling this empathy that I wasn't getting at first because we were still at a distance intentionally. Before I let you go, I have one final question, not about the film, and that is your 2013 film, No, which centres on, you know, the campaign against, you know, the infamous Augusto Pinochet, um, became the first ever Chilean film nominated for foreign language film at the Oscars, which is a great achievement. Since then, Chile has won. And even last year, a Chilean film was nominated in documentary. Um, what were your thoughts when you were when your film was nominated back then uh, as the first Chilean film? Well, it was great. <laughs> yeah, it was fantastic. Um, of course, uh, it's an honor, but 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 mostly, um, it brought a lot of attention to the movie, and it made the movie more known and made more people be interested in the film and hallelujah that's what you want you know if if more people get to see it and and then it becomes more interesting for a broader audience fantastic so that's that's part of the things that that awards do and particularly the academy awards is that one thing is what what happens with the with the movie itself and how exciting and interesting that might be Whatever it is for each people is different. But what they do for all movies is that they get a lot of attention on them and more people get to see them. And that is the best. It's just the best. Yeah, that's ultimately what you want. And hopefully we'll see the same thing for Spencer. Congratulations on a really wonderful film, Pablo. And thank you for joining us. Thank today. you so much. You take care. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Mm -hmm.